Hi, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I'd like to talk about the yacht's electrical system. I get a lot of um, kind of confused owners uh, when they have a problem as to how to diagnose uh, electrical problems with the boat. And I think most of this is um, kind of a lack of testing of all the components while you own the boat so you're not really sure how things work and whether everything's um, operating properly. The biggest challenge we have here in the southeast is um, we almost always have a generator on or shore power. And when you need air conditioning you always need you always need electrical source so the battery chargers are always charging the batteries and you're really never living on 12 or 20 volt, 24 volt power. The result of that is you could have uh, very weak batteries or almost non-existent batteries and you could have uh, engine alternators that don't work. Um, there can be a number of components that being on a battery charger all the time will mask. So the first step is to physically look at your batteries and um, it's amazing when we do surveys how often we find a battery that's all puffed up um, even an AGM battery that's not supposed to vent, it's supposed to be totally sealed. Um, I've seen them split open, um, all kinds of strange things. And the boat was working normally because with a big battery charger on board, um, it's supplying enough voltage from the battery charger alone that as long as you have shore power or you have a generator, um, everything's working fine until it isn't. Um, and most of the failures and phone calls I get are when that second thing fails. Uh, I just had a call from the Atlantic Ocean halfway from Bimini from a guy with an older boat and uh, his house bank was down under 22 volts and he was chugging along, his generator had a problem and he was living on battery power for the house bank um, which basically runs the boat. Um, and even the engine bank was fairly weak um, without the generator. So he didn't know that his engine alternators really weren't outputting anything and he probably could have been driving around for years without engine alternators putting out anything because he always had the battery charger on. So what I'd like to do today is take you through the process of isolating these things. And the first thing we need to do is look at what our normal voltages are and I want you to write those down. And generally you have two, two major banks, the engine bank and the house bank, and then you probably have a separate generator battery as well. So you probably have three major banks in the engine room. And then of course if you have electric thrusters, they are their own banks as well. Um, the electric thrusters are, can be 24 or 48 volt in these boats. Uh, they're set up a little differently, but I'm mainly focused in this video on the house bank the engine bank and the generator battery. So right now I want you to look, go to your panel, whatever that is, and I want you to look at the normal condition of your boat. So right now my service battery is at 27.3 volts. My engine battery is at 27.7 volts. And yes, those are different. I'll tell you why in a minute. My generator battery is at 14.3 volts. Um, and I've got other things on there. We're not going to worry about that stuff. All right, we're going to leave this on service battery at 27.2. Now, by design, um, these battery banks are isolated so that the charger for the house system and the charger for the engine batteries are separate. And the whole idea there is if we leave these things separate and something bad happens to the charger or the batteries themselves, and I give you the ability to parallel something, you could use the other batteries to start the boat or the other batteries to run the systems to get home. But by design, these systems should be isolated almost all the time. So I wanna show you the parallel switches and talk about that downstairs and the battery disconnect switches. So follow me on down to Lazarette. All right, so somewhere near the batteries, there are always battery disconnect switches. It's code. So in this case, the batteries are right here under the crew bunk, um, and some of them are in the engine room. Um, so you're going to see a battery disconnect switch of some type. Um, this 
disconnects my port engine from the battery, my starboard engine from the battery. Those are both on. And this is a parallel switch that lets me parallel my engine batteries on our service batteries. A lot of older boats aren't set up this way. They have a battery bank for the port engine, a battery bank for the starboard engine, and the parallel switch will parallel those batteries together. What we've chosen to do in later models is there is one set of batteries for both engines and then the parallel parallels you to the service battery. Either way, what's important is it should not normally be in parallel mode. Each battery bank should stand on its own most of the time and then in an emergency situation you parallel when you need to. The reason for that is my engine batteries are charged with a 24 volt DC charger my service batteries are charged with the inverter charger, which is a very large, powerful charger. And these two chargers don't need to see each other. They want to keep those separate. So with this parallel switch off, the engine batteries and the service batteries are being charged completely separately with separate chargers by design. If you parallel this, it's okay for a little while to start an engine if you're in a jam, but it's not normal to have batteries in parallel. Now, sometimes there'll be a house bank where there are four, six, or eight batteries, and in that case, the house bank will all be paralleled together because it's treated as one large battery bank. But as a general rule, you should not be paralleling engines, generators, and the house bank with anything else. They should all be separate. This uh, battery load tester, I don't expect you to go out and buy one of these, but if you suspect you have all, um, I would pay them to come out to the boat and they need to um, they need to use one of these to load test the batteries it's not enough to just hook up a voltmeter and see if it's 12 volts or 14 volts uh, to know the health of a battery you have to actually make it work and that's what a load tester does so this device is capable of simulating what it would be like to be starting an engine or running a whole bunch of lights or something like that. So this is called a battery load tester. What you can do though is go find the batteries and I know this is a pain in the butt because they're not in great places but I want you to put your eyes on the batteries. I want you to look at the top of them. There quite often be a date. I have a battery right here and you can see there's a little decal on the top corner in the blue there. It says 5 of 22. So that means that that battery was put in here in May of 22. And when I look at that battery, it shouldn't be puffy. And it's not, that battery looks good to me. So the top is flat like it should be, the sides are flat like they should be. Now if you look at this picture um, on the screen right now, you'll see an example of a generator, two generator batteries actually, that were almost fused together. And we found that on survey day. And the owner of the boat had no idea those batteries were bad. And actually, before we hauled the boat, these two batteries in this picture started the generator. But as soon as I hauled the boat and took away shore power for an hour and a half while we were sounding the bottom with the surveyor, uh, the generator wouldn't start anymore. Um, now this could have happened to the owner if he was in the Bahamas and didn't have the battery charger running for a couple of hours because he turned off his generator to go to sleep or um, he lost dock power during a thunderstorm and all of a sudden he would have had it would not have had any generator batteries. So that's another reason why it's really important to look at these batteries physically and understand whether they're in good shape. All right, now we're gonna go upstairs and we're gonna turn off the charging circuits and I'll show you why in a minute. All right, so step one in this exercise is I wanna know if the batteries look good, so we're gonna physically look at them. Step two is I wanna take away charging capability and see what the resting voltage is. If a battery is in really, really bad shape, when you take away the charger and you leave it for a little while, it'll go way below its normal voltage. Um, that still doesn't tell you if it's in great shape, but it tells you that it's not totally dead. So I'm going to go over to the electrical panel now and I'm going to turn off all charging circuits in the boat. Now in this boat, the inverter charger is my largest charger on the boat. And this is a uh, probably the least understood electrical thing on the boat. When I say inverter charger, it's two machines. Whether the inverter's in bypass or the inverter's inverting does not matter. The inverter charger is a physical half of the inverter charger that charges the batteries and has nothing to do with the inverter circuitry. 
So this is the largest charger on the boat and it's responsible for the highest amp draw um, on this leg of the battery. Uh, I'm sorry, on this leg of the electrical from the shore power of the generator when it's being used a lot. So I'm going to turn off the inverter charger. I'm going to turn off my 24 volt DC charger which in this boat powers my uh, engine bank and it powers my um, thrusters and that's it. Then I also have a 12 volt charger on this boat. Now your boat may have a 24 volt generator or it may have a 12 volt generator. We order them both ways. So in this case I'm going to turn off my 12 volt battery charger as well. So these are the three chargers that are usually on and I'm going to leave them off for a while. Now when you're doing this test I'd like you to do this and go to dinner. Um, for the purposes of this video I'm going to turn it off for 15 minutes. The voltage is going to come down some but not as much as I would like. Now if you'll remember we were at 27 volts earlier on both the house bank and the engine bank and already as soon as I took away that charger I've dropped to 25.3. And let's look at my engine bank. My engine bank's down at 26.5. So I'm going to pause the video here for a minute and let these uh, sit for a minute. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, I've had their battery chargers off for about 20 minutes now. And if you leave them off for two hours, they'll keep coming down. But you'll get the idea here. So I went from 27 for my... Let me go to engine engine batteries were at 27 something now I'm at 26 something generator batteries at 13.3 it was at 14 and let's go uh, my house battery now is down to 24.8 and we were up in the high 27s so that is my resting battery voltage that is what those batteries do when there's no charger being applied now the first thing I want to know in this diagnostic is um, are my engine batteries being charged by my engine alternators? So what I'm going to do is go to my engine battery bank, which is 26.2, and I'm going to start an engine. And what you're going to see there when I crank this engine is that battery voltage is going to drop probably below 24 just for a couple seconds while it's engaging the starter, and then the alternator should make it come back up. I'm going to start the second engine. Now I'm going to rev these engines up a little bit. You can see it's coming up a little bit, but the alternator doesn't do much at idle. You need to be doing about a thousand RPM for it to really kick in. So I've got them revved up to a thousand and now you can see that my battery voltage has come up to 25.7. What should it come up to? I'm not really concerned about the exact number. What I want to know right now is when I'm running my engines and I have no battery charger, are those alternators charging those batteries? And I have confirmed that they are. Now in this boat, I also know that the engine alternators are hooked up to charge my house bank as well. So my house bank has come up as well. So I know that my engine alternators are not only charging my engine batteries, but they're charging my house batteries. So that's step one. All right, now you need to do the same thing for the generator. Most of you have a generator display panel that will show what the battery voltage is. Um, leave the battery charger off, just like we've done here. Uh, start the generator and compare the resting bolt, the resting voltage of the generator battery to the voltage of the battery when the generator is running but the charger is still off. And that will tell you if the alternator for the generator is charging the generator battery. Um, the generator, if it's a boat where it has a 12 volt system, um, it can be pretty critical. Um, even though very little on this boat is 12 volts, uh, some of the things that can be 12 volts um, are the VHF radio. Uh, and or the GPS antenna, um, autopilot controller. So 
I've seen boats where very little is 12 volts, but they're pretty critical things. So you need to know that your 12 volt system is working well, even though you're not reliant on it for most daily living on the boat. All right, I'd um, like to go over um, a little bit of background on electricity usage. I find that um, a lot of you haven't had a lot of background in this stuff and it's hard to understand how much power you're using, how much power you're putting back into batteries, uh, what the inverter is doing. So let's go over some real basics. Let's start with what is a shore power cord. A 50 amp shore power cord is a 220 or 240 volt cord. And if you take 50 amps times 240 volts, you get 12,000 watts. So a shore power, 50 amp shore power cord is 12,000 watts. If you have a 20,000 watt generator and it's putting out 240 volts, that would be 83 amps. I know this gets confusing because some things in your life you talk about volts, sometimes you talk about amps, but a watt is a volt amp. Your engine alternator, you may sound, you may think your engine alternator is impressive because it's 95 amps, but remember it's 95 amps at 24 volts, so it's only 2,800 watts, which is only a fraction of what your shore power cord is. So you can see that your engine alternator puts out far less than you're getting from a generator or from shore power. Your generator alternator is a 40 amp alternator typically, but it's only 12 volts. So if you take 40 times 12, you get 480 watts, which again, is not a lot of energy. Your battery charger may be a 70 amp battery charger, but a 70 amp battery charger at 24 volts is 1,680 watts. A 12 volt battery charger at 40 amps is 480 watts. Again, it's not a lot of energy. So what is, how much energy do you use for things? Well, you probably grew up with regular incandescent light bulbs that were 60 or 100 watts. Well, a 100 watt light bulb at 120 volts is 0.83 amps, so less than one amp. A microwave that's 1200 watts um, at, 120 vo at 120 volts is 10 amps. Your hair dryer at home that's 1800 watts is 120 volts, which is 15 amps. Now again, these are all per hour, so this is 10 amps per hour if it was on for a whole hour is how much it would use. If it's only on for 10 minutes, it's a fraction of that, of course. So keep in mind, you know, how much energy things use. Another thing I see people do is they'll look at their 24 volt panel and say, oh, well, it's drawing X amps. Well, don't forget that if your battery charger's on, and your battery charger is putting the electricity immediately back into the 24 volt house bank, then the only draw on the shore power of the generator at that time is actually what the battery charger itself is putting out. So you don't need to count those amps twice. Now, as soon as you take away shore power or the generator and you're running 24 volts and you see those amps, that is the amount that's coming out of your battery. So I hope this helps. I'm going to do another series on just the inverter. I think the inverter circuitry needs its own discussion on how to run it and how to change parameters. Again, pretty misunderstood thing, I think, in the industry. But um, for safety reasons, I think knowing that your batteries are in good shape, knowing that your alternators charge, and knowing that your charger circuits are working is something you should all do at least once a year. Uh, please like and subscribe and feel free to um, add any comments or um, ask any questions. Thank you very much.